Welcome to Witching and Bitching the Podcast. My name is Darren. And I'm Vicky. How are you all today? As now we pause for everyone to I respond. Know, I, <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> so guys, uh, today we have a very special guest for you. So anyone from Melbourne, um, I mean, without even an introduction, you will probably recognize her wandering the streets of uh, mm-hmm. around uh, the Royal Arcade at, at Burke Street. But we have the lovely Danny from Spellbox here today. So Yay. please make her feel welcome. Yay! Hello, everyone. How are you going? Yeah, good. Really good. Good. I'm so glad. So just to get started, it's one of the questions we'd like to ask everybody is what is your, how how would you describe um, a modern witch or what's your definition of what a modern witch is? Well, this could go on for a little while. (laughs) Go for it. A short version. (laughs) No, you're fine. Um, Go for it. To me, witchcraft is a very personal um, Mm. spiritual space within yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's also about your relationship with others and with nature. Mm. I believe like a witch is a um, very independent person <laughs> and a person yeah. who thinks outside what they're supposed to or the mainstream yeah. and is not connected to a doctrine of someone saying this is how you should be, how you, what your religion should be, what your spirituality should be. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very much based on um, your relationship with nature Mm -hmm. and believing that there is a magical undercurrent in nature and in everyone and everything. So it's like this invisible force that surround us and a witch connects with that. Um, He or she sees beyond the ice Mm. and um, endeavours to do so. Yep. Witches make mistakes and feel stressed <laughs> yeah. and worried and have <laughs> normal people. Too. But to me, witchcraft is it helps you to get out of that feeling a lot mm-hmm. quicker. Yeah. Because you're always delving into the meaning and searching for meaning and fulfillment mm. too and purpose. I think that's a really um, big part of a witch's quest is to find purpose and meaning. Yeah, and it's that, like you said, it's that constant thing where you're constantly searching and and looking. And constantly changing and knowing too that everything's changing all the time. Yes. And um, with every beginning, you know, there comes a death eventually, and with every death is a beginning. So there's a marriage of both energies. And um, we go through inner deaths, you know, as we grow and change and get older. And um, we experience physical death around us and eventually we'll Mm. experience that. Um, But it's to know that that's a way to liberate something new too. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think a witch is someone who experiments and who who tries to liberate their wild side. And that's all (laughs) connected to (laughs) That's the fun Uh, stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, that's where the good stuff is. Yeah, and the authentic (laughs) The truth. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Sometimes we don't know what the truth is within or why we act the way we do sometimes. Mm. And to me, it's finding going into the shadow. And I think that's what makes witchcraft different from a new age movement that's, yeah. sort of, you know, was birthed in the 80s. But it that was never, that never recognised the shadow, whereas witchcraft mm-hmm. does. Where there's light, yeah. there's dark and we all have a shadow and yeah. we must get to know it yeah it's um, such an important part isn't it yeah and to find and to acknowledge that when we have awareness then we can grow and change through that yeah and we can use the shadow in really positive ways too but yeah, if we're not aware of it it can cause all sorts of mischief if, yeah that's right that's where the mind, gold is. i want to jump in on that one only because it's, it's very interesting that you bring that up because even in my, I mean, I've only been a self-proclaimed witch for approximately 20 years now, um, roughly, give or take. But um, even with that in itself, like I've noticed just in my very mm. short period of time as a witchling that there was this resurgence of witchcraft even in the 90s, but it was very much this Hollywood glamorized white witch like yes. again there was this focus on being about the love and the light and all these things that we as witches associate with this new age movement as opposed to witchcraft itself yes. uh, but then now it's kind of like there's almost like the opposite resurgence where now the witches are coming out of the cracks and saying well actually no we do more shadow work than we do mm. light work 
Um, and I don't like to use the terms light and dark as being yeah. negative and positive, just different. Um, yes. But how have you noticed that changing and evolving over well, your years? Yeah, well, in the 90s, and it's so true that, I mean, you know, I've sort of almost forgotten about that, but there was very much, people used to say you were white witch. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, what does that mean exactly? <laughs> Uh, because I do, you know, I'm not always good, as good as I'd like to be. <laughs> and White Witch has that very sort of Hollywood, as she said, or very. It's very Glinda. Glinda yeah, the Good Witch. That's but her, you're always yes. good. And I mean, I'd like to be always good, but mm -hmm. you know, I do have um, many flaws. <laughs> and um, We're human. But I haven't heard White Witch for a long time, which mm. is. Yeah. Cool. And it was very much, I suppose, Charmed. Charm did actually introduce a lot of people to witchcraft. Mm -hmm. you know, that it was yeah. always attractive and fun and whatever. But um, it was very much the light and the dark witch. Yeah. Yep. Um, but now it is evolving a lot more. It's, look, there's so much. It's a very clever way to be, I find. And people who are clever thinkers even if they didn't call themselves a witch, they can see because it works in a really yeah. beautiful way. It's like a philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, it's your own way of evolving and changing as a person. And look, lately I've um, been interviewed um, for an article for the conversation, um, possible one for the New York Times. People are actually seeing, well, actually this works because it's, we need to connect with nature. We need to get our relationship right with Mother mm -hmm. Earth. Yeah. And it's not at all. And we're all a part of that. And we also need to find that meaning. There's so much mental illness and um, stress and anxiety because I think we're just losing that lifestyle. And that, yeah, yeah, we need I think to, a lot of that we need to find ourselves. Yeah, is that that connect? Do you think that's a lot to do with connection with yourself and and to nature and and those things that yeah. we've disconnected from a bit? And I think nature helps you to connect with yourself. Yeah, I yeah. mean we all know if you go for a swim in the sea, walk along the beach, you go into a you know sit beside a beautiful tree. It, yeah, you feel better. Oh, yeah. 100 percent. Oh, definitely. Like that's my go-to thing. Is I've got to go for a walk. I've got to get out. Got to go sit yes. by a tree or something. It Just has be out an amazing hit healing abilities and to even go outside look at the moon at night and the stars yeah yeah but what i didn't say before and this is important which is do do spells yes 100 percent, 100 percent. yes it chills and that's a really um it's a beautiful ceremony ceremony a beautiful way to connect and to step outside of mundane thinking yes because you know fear creeps into all of our lives and worry Mm -hmm. We think, oh, that's going to happen, or I'm not good enough, or whatever. And it's very low energy and mundane. Mm -hmm. When we yeah. create that circle, yeah, and we create create that time and the candle and the incense. Suddenly, it still amazes me after all this time how such a simple thing can make you feel so much more centered. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, and, and can change. Like once we change within, the whole world starts changing around us. Yeah, that's it. That microcosm. Mac Macrocosm. Macrocosm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> macrocosm. Yeah, Micro, like, macro, hang yeah. on, they're both the wrong way around. Yeah. But it's that uh, kind of thing. Yeah, as above, so below. The way yeah. exactly. is yep. what, yeah. what we bring out. I think people were under that illusion too, to going back, that witchcraft, nothing bad would ever happen to you, you know. Yes. Nothing would, you know, you'd never sort of get your purse stolen or all of this. But it's not about that at all. It's what the way you always handle a situation and who you are within a situation yeah and um keeping that balance yeah definitely yeah. and that, that toolbox that you've got it's something extra for you in that toolbox yeah. and yeah. kind of talking on that a little bit if you don't mind like how do you I guess for want of a better word what kind of path or how do you identify or what sort of practices or things um only what you're happy sharing what yeah, that sure. you do yeah um, part of your practice it's, I'm very much sort of um, into my own heart and yeah. into um, I don't follow um, a particular witchcraft tradition. I've read about a lot and I know yeah. about <laughs> a lot that I, um, I do spell. So it's very much sort of my own connection with nature yeah. and with the world and my own life. Yeah. Um, 
but I do do a lot of spells and I have written so many spells in the last 25 years <laughs> <laughs> and created them in boxes. Um, yeah. I think every time I write one, I'm doing it in my mind over and over again. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it is a part of my life, um, talking, you know, looking into my dreams, what they mean, nature, like the, the weather, um, the moon at night, it's just to go out and look at it and the stars. Yeah. Um, I'm always searching for sort of the magic behind yeah. what does it mean behind yeah. everything. But I've done group spells and we at home, we always do a full moon spell with my husband and my son and oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Oh. into it. And they That's love it. Awesome. But I mean, they wouldn't go and say, oh, yeah, let's do a spell. No, but, but that's what with you. Summer, just something simple we always do as a family together and my son's girlfriend. And But I've done lots of spells with friends and also the yeah. witches at Spellbox, you know, every now and again. We have them for a little while because the whole, the whole... I know, the whole COVID, COVID. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've done some, you know, it's beautiful to do spells. And also we have workshops where we always do spells. Yeah. The workshop. I love that. I'm when so everyone's fun. on that same level it is I mean the energy you you just feel so lovely like you're almost can yeah. sort of you know levitate us yeah because all that worry everything starts to lift off yeah. your shoulders and you connect with that um wiser and higher more joyful like you know energy yeah. well, it's like it's like that whole collective consciousness and it's like mm. when you have one person thinking about something versus a whole group of people thinking about something like it's that it's almost like that crescendo that of energy that just yeah. lifts everyone up. Like, I mean, you can experience it even in the mundane things that we do in life. Like, I mean, if you go to practicing yoga at home, I'm talking mm. about this only because of COVID. I've had to do a yeah. lot of, you know, home gym stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's so hard to generate that same euphoric high of a yoga class at home versus when you're in a yoga class with everyone else, you can go into that kind of Absolutely. more the spiritual side of yoga. Mm. It's easier to create that energy, even though it's an opposite of what we're talking about, because that's bringing energy down and being more relaxed. But yeah, it's but that it's, creative consciousness of being with other like-minded people, I think, is amazing. It um, is. And da Danny, you did touch on it now, but I wanted to obviously go into it in more detail. So obviously, that's how I know you is from Spellbox. And for those that aren't from Melbourne, because we do have some people that are tuning into us from other countries as well, so they may not be as familiar with Spellbox as what we are here, but... Um, for those that don't know, Spellbox is quite an institution in Melbourne. Everybody knows it. Um, like yeah. it's in one of the main arcades, the Royal Arcade, just off Burke Street, which is in the centre of the city. Um, I personally love going to Spellbox. <laughs> like I'm like, <laughs> Danny recognised me from coming into the store as often as yeah. I do. But it's one of those things that if I'm having a bad day, I would get on the tram on my lunch break, go down to the middle of the city, and I would go to Spellbox just to, even <laughs> if I didn't want to buy anything, I mean, Let's be honest, I always walked out. I was about to say, I you always walked out with a bag full. <laughs> yeah, but even just going into Spellbox and just being around fellow witches and just the energy mm. that you create there is so amazing. But um, would you be able to tell us a little bit about how that birthed? Yeah, um, well, I was working in the film industry, but I was a witch. Yep. And um, I love the film industry. I used to do the sets and things like that. And I actually was seeing a Reiki um, healer at the time and she did a reading for me and said oh no you're going to do something else and I said oh no I'm not and she said oh yeah you are and she said you like herbs and all that sort of stuff don't you and I said yeah and she said no it's got something to do with that and maybe you're going to be a gardener and <laughs> anyway I thought oh no you know <laughs> she's definitely wrong go. and she said no it's something you really love yourself and other people are going to love it yeah. um, because of what you do with it. And I thought, mm. and she said, look, just give it some thought. And about three days later, I was in my lounge room and my books on spells were there. And I thought, I'm going to, do I know exactly what she means. I'm going to put spells in a box and they're going to look really beautiful because the candle incense and I'm going to write really beautiful, you know, spells and poems to go with it. And people are going to love it. And I just changed like that. Wow. It was almost, it was like a sliding door. That. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just thought this is exactly what, because people were so afraid of it. And I thought if I yeah. made it look beautiful, the box, people would know that it was really good. Yeah, and that it doesn't have that sound. So my husband was working on a film in Cooper Pedy, which is sort of desert with 
And he had to yep. he had no radio contact. He had to go and ring me from a public phone box. You know, oh God. And- I remember those. <laughs> yeah. I remember those. <laughs> I've got a new idea. I'm gonna put spells in a box and create a business. And he was like in the desert going, Oh, okay. <laughs> and he's always been totally into it and supportive. But a lot of people said it will not work. People are not going to buy spells. Wow. You know? I mean, we're selling the ingredients, not the energy and everything no, like that. that but there is still on. that element of your energy going into it as well like that that yeah. beauty that you're creating and and your passion that you're yeah. creating that a well. lot of love and research yeah. and also um commitment i totally 100 percent believe mm. that i say to people when you do a spell what you want mightn't happen exactly the way you mm. want but something will change in you I know mm-hmm. that for a fact. If someone yeah. does it with a genuine heart and a, um, you know, the intention is sort of to change for the better or to bring something beautiful in their life, or it will happen eventually. Yeah. But it can sometimes happen in an unusual way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I've done lots of spells and basically they all um, work. They have all worked. They've all come to me, but in very different ways to what I expected, some of them. But I do a lot of spells now just to help me balance and believe and surrender and have faith and yeah. go with what's meant to be. Have you found that over the years your, I guess, oh, what's for lack of a better phrase, like your direction on reasons for doing spells has changed and evolved as you've changed and evolved? I think it's basically that. I think when I first started way back, when I the first spell I ever did was to, um, I was about 13, and um, it was to get rid of my freckles. So um, I wish I could have them back because <laughs> they did grow eventually. <laughs> so, yeah, that has changed a lot. And um, I think as I've grown and matured, hopefully as a person, because <laughs> I started doing spells, it's not so much like, oh, I really want this to happen. It's like just bring that balance within myself and to enjoy the mystery Mm -hmm. of the future without trying to oh I really you know I don't want that to happen so um you know I'm just hoping hoping I try to let that go now at this stage in my life and um be more accepting and understand myself and understand my shadow if I you know there's some parts of me that I don't want in you know I don't want Mm -hmm. to react that way to that person um we all have things that sort of get to us in life yeah and people and, yeah, <laughs> that's people right you have relationships and some people you love but there's something about them that always get and you know i'm sure it's vice versa yeah. i try to um change that so things don't get to me and i don't feel disappointed i don't feel mm. um or have expectations of others i try and accept but you know that's a bit of a hard road yeah um but I think that's where my spells have gone a lot more. Sometimes, Whereas, you know, my twenties yeah. is all about love. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's well, I find that person of my dreams. Anyway. And... <laughs> um, it. it took a while, but you know, he came along in the most unexpected way too. So, oh wow! Ah, so, oh, see, so I yeah. love those sort of things as well. Like it, it's all a part of it. <laughs> And I think there's there's magic in everything. Like, yeah. people think that magic always has to be like this big, like, I mean casting a circle calling the quarters calling the deities doing all this like big hoopla but like one of the things that i've touched on in a previous episode is that like it, for me there's also magic in the little things yeah so like it's it's about incorporating magic into the day-to-day and noticing the magic around you and recognizing when something comes into fruition it's not always about this big grand wish fulfillment mm, thing exactly no you i'm 100 percent in agreement with yeah. that and so the simplest things like you can have a big elaborate spell or just light a candle I yeah. often say yeah. to people too you know just start because they think it's complicated just <laughs> at night yeah. with dinner light a candle and wish for peace in the home or love in the home or joy or adventure it's so simple it doesn't have to be a long-winded sort of great big sort of thing you have to prepare for and mm-hmm. you're right you see magic in everything and also magic in hardship too Mm -hmm. yeah and that's what took me a long time to start to realize that even in grief 
and in ill health, all sorts of things. There's a magic there. If you find it, it'll start to talk to you and you'll start yeah. to understand life and yourself at a, a deeper level. And, you know, there is no guarantees. There's no exceptions in life. Yeah. We're all yeah. the same. And I think that's one of the things that I like most about the um, the spell boxes that you sell at spell boxes, is that it's they're simple. Like it's like you have a few items in there. Like one of my favorite ones that I've actually I've bought this one a few times now. You would almost think that I could recite this by heart. Yeah. The amount of times I've done it, but this is a spell for a home for infinite love and light. So it's the little home warding one that I actually did this one recently for Ostara because for me, Ostara is all about cleansing. So I do my yeah. spring clean and as part of the spring clean, I do the physical clean, then the energetic clean and then charging the home with what I want for the new year uh, for the, for the next year. And so like, this is one of my favorite ones in there and it's literally the simplest little thing. Like it doesn't have to be big and elaborate. So no. what's your creative uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Vicky, you're the air sign. I'm losing, I'm losing my words. <laughs> losing words. What, what, what's, um, what's, what's, like, how do you go about creating something like this? Yeah, your this creative is, process, I that's guess. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's always based, well, the intention. And mm -hmm. I've thought of what do people really need? You know, everyone wants something that has really good energy. Well, I, don't, I think he's heading out. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's coming home. Um, <laughs> so I start off with that, that um, people want to cleanse their home or they want true love in their mm -hmm. life, yep. real love. They want um, to feel lucky too. Um, and then I always start with the elements, like the four elements, mm -hmm. earth, yep. fire, air and water. So there's usually, not in all, but a candle, incense for air, um, maybe a crystal for water or a little bottle of rose water. And for earth, it could be a herb pouch or, or some salt. And so it starts with there. I start to do it in my mind to like um, imagine it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And magic is in the imagination too. Yeah. We have to actually imagine and think and go deeper. Like with invoking a goddess, you imagine her. Yeah. yeah it has, you yeah. know. And um, the imagination actually, I think, creates that bridge to the magic world too. Because the imagination is basically opening your mind and your heart. Yeah, so, definitely. And yeah. Um, so it always starts with that. And then I do write. Um, so I hope that I write words that people want to say, that it's meaning. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so... Basically, that's where it starts. And then, you know, some spells might have essential like oils on for anointing. So I think it would be really beautiful in this love spell to, you know, um, anoint your heart with the rose oil so um, you feel open to love, you feel more romantic. Yeah. Because a lot of people do ask about love. I was going to say that would have to probably be one of the number ones, yeah. wouldn't it? <laughs> a lot of stress and worry comes with wanting yeah. love to come into people's yeah. lives. But what the spell does, it makes the journey to love sacred. Mm, so it makes, it's always yeah. the intention. Yeah. If you make your intention to really love someone um, and to be with them, a sacred journey the mundane the worry falls away and the fear and the, i'm never going to meet someone or is it him or her or yeah so did you find that it's kind of sometimes it's that flipping flipping over of instead of like what i need what i need but to kind of find more the getting that journey it's to almost falling right. like preparing yourself with yeah yeah and a lot of because i've read a lot i don't have time at the moment to do readings at spellbox but people looking for love i've asked them they don't feel romantic inside themselves yeah. it's, yeah. it's sort of that yeah. feeling of stress yeah. and with magic as you guys know it's um the same energy gets magnetized yeah too so it's amazing. It's like when you go to a party and you're feeling really good in yourself, suddenly everyone wants to talk to you. <laughs> when you think, oh, I'm really nervous or no one wants to, no one seems to. So yeah, that's you've it. got to create the romance within and yeah. to be romantic about life in general, yeah. about the moon, the stars, and to feel that and know that it's what's meant to be will be, but you've got to recognise it. Yeah. Some people would never recognise the right person because they think of, 
how he or she has to look and if they've got the right job. There's a lot of that. Yeah, so I can imagine. About the spiritual connection. Yeah, about too. changing it. Yeah. yeah, I almost find as well that there's this miss. Oh, that's the, why am I struggling with words today? <laughs> it's almost like this, like um, miscommunication. No, it's it's like when they they it's like this misleading thought or whatever that yeah. I can't think of the word to say right now. But it's basically that there's this belief out there that it has to be perfect or it has to be right. And yeah. I almost believe that that's almost like a. It's like people are trying to micromanage. Yeah. the universe and they're trying to micromanage the outcome mm. because they're so specific with he needs to have this job and be this tall and these colored eyes and this and that and it's like you could like universe may have thought that this one's a better fit for you why would you want to micromanage yeah. it and lead me down that way when he could have been a better option you know what i mean and it's almost like there's that people just get so in their head about what they think they so want kind of narrow be. with like that defining traits or whatever they think they need yeah whereas i love that the fact that for a love spell you make it all about mm. opening them up to love and yeah. doing that inner work to make themselves more lovable and more loving yeah. is really where it's at exactly and it is that surrender to mm -hmm. yeah, yeah to that connection yeah because when you're open i mean so many um you know sometimes it doesn't have they think some big spark has to happen straight away yeah mm -hmm. to, now that can happen and that's lovely, but sometimes that evolves yeah. by actually yeah. opening up to someone who you think, gee, she's really lovely or he's really smart and I like the way he smiles or whatever. Yeah. And then you get to know that person, suddenly it's like you're there. They don't give that a chance. No. Because no. that person doesn't fit the job or the house that they kind of a checklist. The yeah. And I think being a witch is letting go of control. Too. Yeah. And just being controlling. Like a, yeah. You know, well, it's guiding your emotions to the right energy. Yes. A better word, guiding. I like it. Control something else, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Something completely different. And coming but, back to what you were saying before with the readings and things like that, I know there that you do um, scrying is one of the things that yes. types of reading. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Because I'm super excited and I'm very fascinated by the hot by scrying. <laughs> I really love I love anything mysterious and I think yes. witches do. And yeah. I think it's sort of totally unexplainable. Mm -hmm. And something that also um, I love the whole psychic world and looking into the past, mm. present, yep. future. Um, so scrying, I use a black obsidian mirror too. That you can scry off any reflective surface, um, crystal balls. Um, obsidian is traditional, but it doesn't have to be. Or even a, a mirror you find in an op shop. Yep. Um, you cleanse it. Now, um, mugwort is the perfect herb to use with um, scrying mirrors and surfaces. And mugwort, you can either make an infusion, um, like a tea with fresh yep. mugwort or dry, and then you wash the surface or you put it through mugwort smoke yep. too as an incense people scry in different ways and often people think which you can do is to see an image actually in the mirror yeah mm -hmm. um but often with um psychic work or scrying it's like you can see an image in your mind have a feeling in your body, feel an emotion, suddenly feel really cold or ooh, a little bit sick. Or um, So every scry will scry differently and you'll know um, how you scry. You might um, be scrying for someone and you do, you feel oh, the number five comes into your head or a flight of birds. So you sort of think, oh, you know, some maybe some healing's needed or you need to sort of, um, you know, look at life from a higher perspective. <laughs> yeah. um, so you interpret those images that come into your mind. Yeah. So it's like, it works like the tarot too. I mean, I know the tarot is there as a picture, but mm -hmm. you still need to see the story of what's happening. Yeah. Um, Often you might, when you read for someone, you'll see their reflection in the um, actual mirror. Um, so sometimes their reflection changes. So a young person might change into a, an old man and look wow. like that. It's very shadowy, so it's great. Yeah. to sort of like, and or 
someone might change in a man might change into a woman so you'll interpret that that yeah. or maybe you need to you are going to meet a woman or maybe the feminine within you is going to sort of be released and you'll feel gentler about the world or yeah so it's always with any psychic work it's you have to put the logic logical mind aside yes and that's the hard it, part <laughs> and if you can switch on which is always the best way <laughs> that flow of um, channeling or yes. receiving messages and just let it come out of your mouth and then you get into a really beautiful role and it's really beautiful like with your scrying spheres that I can see oh, yep. yes have, you could um, have a look at someone's face in that and just take a breath you know you put mug water I don't know if you've got any but it is the best herb to burn and it gives you a very dreamy feeling. It feels yes. so good. And um, then you sort of connect with that dream like, and you create a dream or just even create, go, I get people to go into their imaginations in a workshop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they go, oh, I can't, I can't see anything. I can't feel anything. Okay, make up the story. <laughs> when they make up the story, the other person sitting there and thinking and saying, that was amazing. You were spot on. So make yeah. up a story because there's a billions of stories that you could make up, but the story you'll make up will be the right one with that person. Yeah. So I guess is it almost as that. though is it almost as though the the object that you're scrying into is it's no longer about necessarily seeing something external to self. It's more that the object is more like the meditative or focal point mm -hmm. that then allows your mind to slip into its subconscious and for the messages to come through. Is that Look, that there's probably a lot of ways you can look at it, and that's okay. the right way. I find with the mirror, it's like a window. That's how uh -huh. I see it, or a portal yeah. to look in mm -hmm. to. Yeah. And the spirit in there, so that's one way, and the spirit to talk to you. And it's the same with tarot cards too. Yep. Don't read the cards. Let the cards talk to you, and mm -hmm. it's, you'll get a different feeling. And of course, it's working on all sorts of your intuition, your mind. But if you, it's the lot, once you start saying, um, I don't know if that's right or yeah. um, I'm not sure, then that breaks that. But um, it is like a muse, like um, the mirror. I tend to think with mirrors and crystal balls, they sort of have a spirit, like they really do speak mm. to you. So they're there. Um, but a lot of people would think, yeah, it's a muse or the psyche yeah. work. So either way, it's right. This is just a different way of explaining it. But it um, mirror work, and it's great to have a little mirror too with friends. I mean, this can be fun. This is fun too. Yeah. And which is, you know, you're allowed to have fun, <laughs> enjoy, and it's heartfelt. And sometimes you do a reading and it is very sad, the reading. Yeah. And, you know, you connect up because that person's going through something that's very difficult. But you can also have some real fun and joy with friends with mirrors yeah. and looking in them and, and reading for each other. And is there any particular time of like cycle of the moon or time of the year or anything when you think scrying is best or is easier? Well, or... I love the full moon, the heightened madness mm -hmm. yeah. of the full moon, <laughs> we all know. And yeah, I think with witches you have to have that madness. And to read for someone, most people would consider it mad <laughs> yes, <laughs> but you are reading someone's yeah. life or the future and i believe you can see the future too mm -hmm. not everything but things yeah. do come up so um look any time is great but the full moon's always got that sort of added little bit of sort of magic and um i think the energy is heightened our emotions are often heightened mm -hmm. so um you know it rules the tides it rules the water within us so it's a great way to but you know that's once a month or you know twice sometimes not often um so anytime's great too yeah, yeah. and i noticed that um there's another like obviously scrying is is, is an amazing thing that i'm yet to delve into <laughs> i mean I'm i have sure these will, i have yeah. these beautiful scrying yeah, tools here say, beautiful thing. but see with me i'm one of those it has to be perfect or I have to know exactly what to do. Like, and rather than just doing it and seeing what comes up, like, yeah, I'm always Experience one of those, like, overanalyze it. 
Yeah, because you will start off and as you do it, it will change and evolve anyway. And a lot of people say that about spells. They get worried, oh, mm. if I do it wrong, you can't do anything wrong. Oh, the amount of years that I spent yeah. not doing any spell work because yeah. I was scared that what if I open up a portal and some demon comes through or <laughs> whatever. Thank you, Hollywood, for putting that idea in your head. <laughs> That's it. Um, <laughs> but um, actually, the other thing I wanted to touch yeah. on as well that I that you do do at Spellbox is because it's not just about like the spells that you have there. But I know I myself have purchased a besom from Spellbox. I've purchased a witch's hat from Spellbox. Like even just the tools that you guys have available yeah. there are so magical in their own right because I've, like so much effort and time and intention has gone into them. Because I know that you run workshops where you yeah. can learn to make. I think the ones that I've seen in the past have been like how to make a poppet, like a witch's poppet. Mm. I think you actually do besom making classes as well. Yeah, for- we've, had, we've had all sorts of workshops. So we, we do. We sell all the witch's tools like chalices and um, we've um, got really beautiful um, besoms and brooms um, in case anyone didn't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <What>? Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure that was um, and they're all symbolic tools. We've got beautiful athames, which represents yeah. you know, the air element or the witch's knife and wands and we try to get a lot of things locally made and we're trying mm-hmm. yeah. more and more so if there's any makers out there we'd really love to hear from you um we've expanded that um we sell tarot and rooms and yeah journals um yeah everything i think the witch needs and we you know try to expand i'm pretty sure my very first witch book was actually bought from spellbox i'm yeah. pretty sure um, I think I, 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 I think that the first ever book that. that I bought on the craft was Sons of the Goddess by Christopher Penchek. And I remember walking into Spellbox and, <laughs> and I was like, I was only a, oh, I was out of school already, but I was, I remember I worked in the city and it, I felt so like, oh, is someone going to see me looking? walking into this witch store? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got to the witch store to like buy yeah. stuff. And, and even now, like I walk into Spellbox and like, obviously, because you guys also get the uh, flooding of tourists that come through because mm. they come to the Royal Arcade to take photos of the like the little statues and stuff in the arcade. Yeah. And sometimes when I'm in the store, I'll hear them walking in the air and you hear all those comments about, oh, this is like, this is like Hogwarts or, <laughs> yeah. you know, they make all these pop culture references to the store and it's, Sometimes I like to just people watch in the store <laughs> or, or, or shall I say people listen. Yeah. Like I'll just yes. be like, I'm looking at books or looking at crystals, <laughs> but really I'm listening to the little conversations of people when like, oh my God, look, there's a spell. We could do that and see if that guy likes you. And like, you just hear all these like school girls and school boys and stuff like looking around the store or like little kids. Uh, <laughs> one of the things I love is around school holiday time. Because you guys do an amazing school holiday program as well. Yes, we do. For kids to come in and learn about magic and yeah, real magic. Yeah, that's and amazing. they love it. It's amazing. Um, one of the other witches, Akira, takes those now. I did years ago, mm-hmm. um, and I couldn't. It was so astounding what children wanted to talk about and what mm-hmm. they brought yeah. up, and they yeah. bring up things about their you know uncle had just died and they wanted to remember him in the circle and just such beautiful heartfelt and amazingly deep mm. um wow. they love it because they get it they understand yeah it. that's it yeah, got yeah. That. but i'm with you darren i love listening to people and i mean but <laughs> sometimes it's so funny because even just to hear people speaking about magic and what they think about it and oh listen this go on let's get this and it's just like a beautiful insight into life and yeah. human heart because we all want ma- i think we all yearn for magic mm-hmm. I think you know do. um yeah. you know, shopping and buying a house and doesn't give you that you know that deep energy i mean love relationships are magic yeah and um that's what we need but we're looking for what's the meaning it's always me, you know, it comes back to that. But we have a hilarious time at stock take when because we have to do stock take like any business. Like, yeah. We've got Which 20 things here. Have the, I have many witches hats. And we're just sort of doing it. And then suddenly, like I just crack up because it's like so hilarious. Yeah. It's like, how many ones do we have? And how yeah. <laughs> one oak <laughs> one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That would be the so, best stock take ever, I think. Yeah. Oh, so, if, by the way, if you ever need a hand with stock take, I, I'm down. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I will, I'll I will volunteer my time. I'll just be a volunteer, no payment required, just to sit there and be amongst 
like my witchy people doing a witchy stock <laughs> deck would be just like a whole nother oh, experience it's hilarious it really is so um look there's a lot of fun it is a dream come true in so many ways um for me i didn't realize when i first started spellbox that i'd have to it would be like a business because mm-hmm. yeah. i didn't have a business background and yeah. for it to survive the only way a business survives is to sell things and it mm. takes it's all about mathematics and all the rest. Of it. Yeah, yeah. It. But I thought I'd be just talking about magic all day. And then so I got a very, you know, a big shock yeah. for a while because I had to learn about business. Yeah. Um, I mean, business has been in witchcraft traditions for years, you know, mm-hmm. you, you know, selling things, selling potions, selling. Um, <laughs> so that has been a huge um, learning curve. But you know, it is, it's sort of funny because I see Spellbox as separate to me, like it has an energy, it's a real mm-hmm. entity. It's own. Yeah. And I really do respect it because of, um, you mentioned before, Darren, about going in there and feeling something. People say that a lot. And some people have said it's almost, and this sound, it's, I feel so humble to hear this, but it's, you know, it's interesting that. They felt like that sort of gone into a temple or something. I mean, it's oh like, yeah, uh, it's but, real. It's yeah. real. Like I, I could be having the worst day and just I would just mission number one go to Spellbox. Like <laughs> on my lunch break, I just go to Spellbox. <laughs> Even though I'm having a really crappy day, I'll go to Spellbox and I'll just walk around. And just the moment you walk through the door, it's just like this. Oh. <sighs> I don't know whether it's a sensory thing because you guys have that beautiful incense that you're constantly burning and it just floods out into the arcade and everything. Yes. Just, yeah. It's just, I, I couldn't even describe it to you, Danny, if I tried. There's, it's like a whole, mm. it's just the energy of the people that are in there plus the smell of the place, just the feel of the place being around all these magical items. Like there's just, it's this whole, and even like, it's going to sound kiddish, but one of my favorite pastimes is to walk into the store, put my little donation into the back and spinning the wheel, you know, what's it called? The wheel of, wheel of stars. Wheel of stars, yes. My because husband a... made that. Really? Oh, really? And, um, well, it was found objects, which I found, you know, the, the little, it's got an owl on it. It's got the three goddesses. It's got like a wizard's face carved out of driftwood. Yeah. And, but that's an actual spinning wheel. Oh, wow. You know, and a lot of the goddesses wow. were associated with the fevers, the fates and Athena all had the spinning wheel. And so my husband, Jeff, he's um, an amazing builder and he put it all together. But people come and queue up sometimes, which is all. I've, <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it. There's a queue. Yeah. I would be one of those people. <laughs> But then you also have the, there's a little el- elven wheel as well. There's an elf there's wheel. There's an elf's wheel, which yep. is started off for children, but yeah. everyone spins. I was about to say, I bet all the big kids and are the ones they love it. The and <laughs> it's all based around all the fae, you know, the brownies, silks, yeah. and um, gnomes, and all the various sort of uh, hobs and fae. And you spin it and you open up a little door and there's an oracle in each one. So it's sort of, no one tells you about your magical talents and um, the Wheel of Stars is based around the tarot, the 22 major arcana. Don't worry, Vicky, I'll invite you to, when the borders open, you can come stay at my house. Just come stay at my place. We'll go to Spellbox together. We'll make sure Denny's going to be there. You can hear it. Yes, 100%. I would love that because, it, that's what it sounds like though as well is that it's just got that amazing energy of like that community energy as well like of bringing people together to yeah. learn and and to be in the same space and people who've um come in which makes me feel extremely old um which is fine <laughs> but with their babies in a pram oh the next time used to come in here when i was a kid yeah my child in and that. often people from the country have said every year they make a pilgrimage to Spellbox yeah, when they come to here. Melbourne. And, mm-hmm. and we have all the regulars, you know, um, people yeah. who work in the city. Hopefully they will come back. And um, it's that I think it, when people walk in, it has been built on love and belief and um, a lot of a lot of hard work for many, many years, yeah. with, you know, and dedication of just building it and building it because it was so new when yeah. we started. Yeah. And, um, yeah, like family helping and all sorts of things. But well, And we've got yeah, a really yeah. beautiful team of, of witches. All the girls, women there are lovely, all ages, you know. Yeah. 
I was actually going to touch um, all on that. types of people, which is great. Even I though I now live far from the city, I used to work in the city when I worked in corporate, but now I work for myself. So I work from home. So I, there's no reason for me to be in the city, but I always find an excuse <laughs> say, oh <laughs> to go into the city now. <laughs> but like, that's one of the things I was going to mention is that it's not just about the establishment of Spellbox and like the physical structure and the, mm. the, the things that you're selling. It's also like, I find it's about the caliber of people that you hire to work there because I know, you know, over the years, because I, I think I've been, how long has Spellbox been around for? Like just the shop's been there over 20 years, about 20 Cause, years. Yeah, because I was gonna say I know I've definitely been going there for at least 15, if not more, yeah. years on and off over yeah. the years. I've been going to the store. And it doesn't matter which staff are there, because I know that obviously staff change over time, like everything. But it wouldn't matter how out there my question <laughs> i would just walk up and i literally i walk in the store and they're like oh hi how are you going i said yeah no, not bad thanks and like oh can i help you with anything i'm like okay wow. so i have this question <laughs> and they're like okay what is it and then like i'll literally just throw them in the deep and i'm like so i'm trying to conjure up this thing and, da, 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 and, and like i think as soon as i walk in i start opening with that like hang on a second uh, we have a specialist for that specific thing and they'll literally go get one of the other girls who specializes in whatever the obscure question that i've asked because yeah, yeah. i've asked them about entities that have that have come into my house that shouldn't be there and how to banish them i've asked them about you know doing my naming ceremony and what oils i should use and like <laughs> I, the, the most obscure questions ever and there's always someone in the store that knows the answer oh, it's cool. never a case of I don't know, or here's a book. Like yeah. they literally, they take it they upon wanna, themselves to yeah. want to help you. Mm. Um, They've got, I, yeah, be, real great knowledge and people do specialise in different areas. So, mm -hmm. right. but beautiful hearts. They're really yeah. great, you know. Um, we've had, you know, well, 17 years, I think Oriana's been there. Um, so we've had really long-term people yeah. and then new people too, but... You have to have really sort of good hearts and um, to work there. Yeah. 100%. Because, yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I literally that. have every single, well, it's not called witchcraft stores on Google, but I think they call them metaphysical supply stores is, yes. is the Google term for it. <laughs> um, yeah. So I've got every single one in the whole of Melbourne marked on my Google Maps so that yeah. I know where they all are because I make it my thing to know all the different places to go for the various things. And the one place that I always come back to is Spellbox. Like I'll always suss out the other ones, but I'll always come back to Spellbox just because you guys know what you're talking about. It's like the legitimate mm. witchcraft tools, not just some plastic thing that they've imported from Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's there's there's a certain level of authenticity about Spellbox. Yeah. Um, that well, I think thank, is yeah, thanks for recognizing that because um, that's what I want and that's what yeah. the intention is. And, um, you know, everything that goes into those little boxes and that is thought through and, and the hope that before they're actually closed, you know, mm -hmm. um, whoever packs them, rings the bell over them. You know, we think that, that wow. that's probably going to do something lovely to some, you know, um, and change someone for the better or yeah. bring that magic in, give them an experience too. And that's what I think, yeah, we're all looking for that beautiful experience with insight, you know, in ourselves too. And um, thank you for saying that too, because of course we do work hard too. That's all. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, that's like, I mean, I'm not being paid to make these comments. It's just my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's just that, you know, I, that's why I wanted to invite you on the show because Vicky, obviously being from Adelaide, she knows yes. of Spellbox. But that's right. But I don't know yet. the experience yet. 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 Um, but that's why I wanted to have you on here because we, we started off with contacting people that have meant something to our mm. journeys as witches. And the first place I thought of was Spellbox because I'm like, it's like it's right nice. in the city. Everybody knows it. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, and who, and I, I'm friends with Asha on Facebook. And I was chatting to her one day and I said, like, I was just telling her about the podcast. She's like, oh, I should get Danny on the show. And I'm like, I'm actually wanting to get Danny on the show and I'm hoping you can help me get us there. So, and then I know that she spoke to you and that's how we ended up getting oh, in contact wow. in the end. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the other thing I wanted to ask just in, in closing is like, obviously now things are starting to open up again in Melbourne. Mm. Um, so obviously the shop will be opening up again soon. So, I mean, it might be too early days yet. And I know I'm throwing, kind of throwing you this <laughs> preparation, but do you have any um, workshops or even if it's online workshops or anything that's coming up 
if people yeah, want um, to get involved. At the moment, yeah. we've got, well, we open on the 4th, which mm -hmm. is tomorrow week, and which will be great. And that's all on Facebook, the the hours. Yeah. We will be starting um, when we can, um, mm -hmm. workshops. Yep. We do have some online um, fantastic um, courses. Nat and Jane's taking them at the moment. I am madly, um, I just got a contract with Llewellyn Books for my book. Oh, and wow. I'm working on the second edit. And there's a lot of things. That's why my wow. time is just so crazy. Yes. Um, but that should be finished at the beginning of December. So that'll be out next year. It's called Becoming the Witch. The wow. wow. So, um, so this is like exclusive news that we've yes, just... Yes, I was just yeah, saying. Yeah. No, I can say it now because I've just got, well, the title I had to... Um, the original title didn't get picked, so I had to come up with some other titles, but I'm happy with it. And, um, yeah, so I'm working on that. Nat is doing a lot of workshops on witchcraft online mm -hmm. Beautiful. through Spellbox. Yep, um, yep. And we've got the readers online. But as of next week, look, things are opening up more and more. We'll get the yeah. full moon um, workshops happening again. And awesome. All all the magic because that that is so beautiful to have that we do have regular people all the time yeah they come yeah. and it's so lovely to re-see them and you know like yeah. sort of connect and you do connect on a very deep level too well you'll have to keep us in the loop about yeah. the official yeah, launch of your book and yeah. send us some artwork and yeah. so we can share it Pop with it all of our there. listeners yeah. and Hopefully we'll have a launch and you guys will be invited. So oh wow! Yeah, I'll keep all your details. So Thank you. awesome. But it's next October. Um, but you know, publishers work a year yeah. ahead. I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah. But it's you know, it rolls around pretty quickly. Oh, oh, I was about to say, yeah. Especially this year, I just reflected yesterday with Vicky and said I've spent yeah. nine months in my house. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, and I'm like, I, I literally counted because we moved in on the 28th yeah. of 28th of February, and so the like literally the end of this month away. is that you're like going to be it's going to be nine months by the time i get out of here from when we moved in or thereabouts or eight, 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 eight nine months something like that but anyway and i'm like i can't believe i've literally spent 2020 in my house <laughs> it's been a very strange year it's it is really definitely is. strange and it's, it's so almost the non-year or something yeah it is yeah. It? it's just and like, like, everyone was saying 2020 is going to be this amazing yeah. star. <laughs> and then 2020 just said no, nah. it's not. <laughs> but nah. in, in all honesty, like jokes aside, one thing that I've learned a lot about 2020 mm. and being a witch and being not afraid to go into the shadows yeah, exactly. is that the yeah. amount of like introspection that I've been able to do, like, I mean, literally this whole concept of this podcast alone is yeah. birthed from 2020 because I decided to, I've been reading tarot cards for 20 years or plus. And so I decided this year, you, like spirit told me, you need to teach, you need to teach tarot online. I'm like, okay. All so right. I put it out there. That's how I met Vicky, who's obviously from Adelaide. And then randomly, we both were just talking and I'm like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if there was a podcast? She goes, oh, where we could just talk about being witches and we could just bitch about stuff. And it's like, witching and bitching the podcast. Yes. And then from there, it's right. literally just birthed. And to this date, we've only, we've got eight episodes that are in yeah out already at yeah. the time of recording this but by the time obviously we put this out there there's going to be even more episodes but so yeah. it's like it's literally just come out of 2020 yeah that's right the fact that we've slowed down and thought mm. what can i do with my life yeah. <laughs> and hasn't it changed that kind of perspective a little bit as well like like you said like what what's important and, mm -hmm. and coming back to those things and growth and personal growth and things like that and that slowing down and being creative mm -hmm. yeah. too. Yeah. I think a lot of people have said that, that actually yeah. it's been very hard, obviously, for people who've got sick and yeah. um, their yep. families. It's really terrible. But out of it, there has to come some change for us yeah. all. When we think, yeah. oh, this is where I want to be in my life. This is the life yeah. I want to create. So yeah. I think that's another thing about witchcraft, the responsibility for your life is with you. 100%. Yes. And I, I was going to touch on that note, is mm. that like now more than ever, I'm seeing so many witches awaken. Like yeah. I, I believe that we're all witches when mm. you boil it down to some yeah. level of degree. Me like too. we're all witches in some way or another, yeah. whether it's past, present, future, like, you know. So I've noticed though that there's been this awakening of the witches because yeah. there's almost like this this uh need or this calling to serve and to help heal and to help educate mm. and to help 
bring a voice and to make people realize that like there's a certain amount of responsibility that we have. We're the ones who are the most in contact with mother, mother earth and, and mother nature. And like, we can help heal because when we heal mother earth heals and when she heals the rest of humankind heals, like it's this yeah. micro macro. Yeah. I was going to say those beautiful ripple effects that we were talking about before. Yeah. And so that's another reason why we wanted to do this is to put it out there. And then if we can, if we get one more person to awaken to their mm. witchiness, yeah. <laughs> then great it is just it's your connect the connection with nature yeah. and the power of nature that we are our children of earth yes yeah. Home. Yeah. and um and no one can tell you how to feel spiritually it's a natural thing that's why nature is a part of witchcraft it's yeah. it's connection and meaning and hundred yeah. percent and it's um very imaginative and very um it never, the journey never stops. Uh, you know, it's like an adventure. Hundred <laughs> percent. Choose your own adventure, kind of thing, too. <laughs> yeah, life is an adventure. You can make it as easy or as difficult That's as you right. want it to be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Danny, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Um, it's been amazing. Vicky, did you have any other questions that you wanted to no, ask? No, that's beautiful. No, no it's been awesome. amazing. Although, mind you, I could just sit here and chat. All yeah, <laughs> chat. But it'd be lovely to see you guys. Yeah. Absolutely. It's definitely once it all opens we'll connect on facebook with this too so we'll, oh 100 yeah. yeah please definitely. connect with us um because yeah, yeah we'd love to obviously um when we stop rolling the cameras please stick around because there was a couple of other questions i want to ask you off camera yeah. but um <laughs> <laughs> but for anyone else so guys if you want to check out spellbox they've got an online store you can go to it's www.spellbox.com yeah. There's no dot .au. Oh, .au. .au. Okay, yep. So you can jump onto Spellbox's website, check it out. The website's amazing. You'll get a feel for it. And then when you're ready to start traveling back into the city, because I know not everyone's so eager to get out there in the public, <laughs> but they're located in the Royal Arcade, which is just off Burke Street, right in the center of the city. So um, once again, Danny, thank right. you for coming on our show. Thank you, thank thank you, so, you so much. much. Thank you for asking. And to our listeners, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye, everyone.